Hey, what's up guys? It's Cypher, and today I am bringing you the Magic of Nightblade detonation build that I've been using uh, for the past couple of days. Uh, obviously, recently I just worked in the Vicious Death set into the build, but this build can work without Vicious Death, and I'll explain the different gear options you guys have with this build. So, let's get right into it. I like to make my build videos short and to the point. This is a Magic of Nightblade light armor build. Um, maximizing burst potential using detonation soul tether and a lot of different buffs uh, we have our dual wield bar we have uh, sap essence which is very good aoe after your initial burst to finish off targets it also is really good because it gives you a uh, spell damage buff so you don't need entropy or other other things to get your spell damage up after you begin the fight we're using Concealed Weapon for speed and obviously just for damage when you need it. Lotus Fan. It's a really good ability, not just because of the gap closing capabilities, but when you gap close into a group of players, it does an AoE dot, which with the amount of magic and spell damage you have, it does hit for a decent amount, but it also snares your opponents that are around you, making it easier to burst them down and limiting their mobility. Inner Light, which just by having it slotted, it gives us Max Magicka, 5%, and gives us uh, Major Prophecy, which increases our spell critical. But I also use this ability to proc uh, Might of the Guild. So the Mage's Guild, the last passive right here, after casting a Mage's Guild ability, uh, your next attack is increased by 20%, as long as it's activated within 5 seconds. So really, really useful to cast it before your Detonation or Soul Tether, um, just to get a little bit more burst now shadowy disguise now this morph i never used to use this morph just because of the fact that it didn't remove damage over time but they reworked the way cloak uh works in the thieves guild patch and the base cloak doesn't remove damage over time but it suppresses it so all the morphs of cloak suppress uh dots so shadowy disguise if you have a dot on you and you go into cloak you will not be pulled out of cloak you'll just suppress the dot now this morph uh, makes your next attack within three sex three seconds uh, be a critical strike. Uh, so it's a guaranteed crit, unless you you know obviously unless you're going against a shield, which it won't crit against a shield, but it's a critical strike guaranteed within three seconds. Um, soul tether is on our front bar. Uh, obviously, we want a siphoning ability on our front bar because of you know the eight percent max magic. And now we do have sap essence, but you do want soul tether on your front bar. That way you can have access to it because you're going to want to use this ultimate along with proxy detonation and time it to the point where um, they, you know, you cast them at the same time. They both go off at the same time and you get the burst damage. So Soul Tether is going to be your go-to ultimate. And the reason I like this over Meteor, Meteor is telepath. People can see it before it comes and a Dawnbreaker is a cone in front of you. This one works best with detonation because it's a circle. If it, it does damage in a circle around you, and so does that nation, so it synergizes really well. Our back bar is a resto bar. Uh, you could have gone one hand and shield on your back bar, and that's a possibility if you if you have healers in your group. But since I play solo, I decided to go with resto. Uh, Clouding swarm. I, I rarely use this ultimate. Really, I just have it here mainly for the uh, the magical recovery that you get by slotting a, a vampire ability on your bar. But sometimes it does come in handy either as an escape or as an offensive ability depending on who you're going against. Uh, but usually I stick with uh, detonation. Shadow image, uh, just for a little more mobility and juking capabilities to get out of sticky situations. Healing ward as a heal plus shield uh, when you're getting focused. Double take for stealth, uh, you know, just, just, not, just for movement speed in general, but for extra movement speed while in stealth because it's going to stack with concealed weapon. Plus the 20% dodge chance helps you a little bit when it comes to survivability uh, in those big groups, against those big groups. Relentless Focus. Now, the reason I'm not going with Merciless Resolve is because I rarely actually proc the bow for this ability. Um, you're not going to really be proccing it. I mean, unless you have Swallow Soul in this build and you're doing a light attack Swallow Soul rotation, stick with Relentless Focus. The 8% stamina recovery will save you a lot more than you think uh, because this build does have very low resource management. Um, so any little bit of extra management you can get, whether from your magic or stamina, is really good proximity detonation now this is the you know the main uh you know dps burst that you're gonna get out of this build time this with your soul tether with your ultimates with everything that you need to time it with and you're good to go this build 
even though it's actually a lot easier to play than some of the other builds um, that I've posted as far as like just, you know, you, you got to put your buffs, you got to, you know, get your detonation. This build is all about timing. Compared to other builds, the timing is really, really crucial on this build. Making sure you time all your buffs properly, make sure you, making sure you time your proximity detonation with your soul tether, with your alchemist set, which I'll get into the sets in a second, with your empowerment and all, that, all the other buffs that go along with it. So it's really important that you time everything to make sure that this build works properly. Okay, let's go into the armor sets really quickly. Now this is pretty much end game gear as far as I'm concerned. Now you could get vicious death jewelry, but you have to change a few things around. And honestly, this is, in my opinion, the best way to go about it. I'm rocking three will power jewelry, all spell damage, all arcane. On the dual wield, I'm rocking two vicious death swords with sharpened, a vicious death um, light hat. Well, vicious death only comes in light and in weapons, so vicious death hat, shoulder, and gloves. I got the vines on all three pieces. I'll let you know my mundus and all that in a second. So this is the complete vicious death. One, two, three, four, five. Now we are also wearing the alchemist set, which gives us double maximum health. Spell damage, and when you drink a potion, you feel a rush of energy gaining 661 weapon and spell damage for 15 seconds. Now we are wearing four pieces on the body. The chest, which is heavy, light belt, light boots, and medium legs. And the reason why we're going one heavy, one medium, five light is because we do have Undaunted at rank 9, which means if you wear... Five light, one heavy, one medium. If, basically, if you wear three different armor types, you get a 6% boost to your stats. And this is going to boost our health, stamina, and magic by 6%, which is going to help our survivability and our damage output. Now, the Restoration Staff is a Alchemist Resto Staff. So this means you only have the Alchemist set on your Resto Bar, which for, for people who you know don't understand what that means is you have to drink your potion... On your resto bar to get the spell damage uh, buff. If you drink on your du dual wield bar, it's going to be a waste because you will not take advantage of the uh, extra 661 spell damage that you gain after drinking a potion. So it's important that you swap to your resto bar before you drink a potion and engage into combat. Now let's go into our stats really quickly. Now I am an Imperial. This is not the best race for this build, not at all. Like, but it works. Like you can make it work, which which. Should like that should answer your question. Can I run this with my Khajiit? Can I run this with my Orc? You can run this with any race you want, because this Imperial has no magical bonuses whatsoever, right? Yeah, he has health and stamina, which does come into play and it does help, but no magical bonuses, no magical critical, no magical elemental damage, none of that stuff. So no re no recovery. But it's still I can make this build work with Imperial. So if you're running any other race, you can still make it work. Now the top races, in my opinion. For this build. Uh, the hardest hitting race is going to be Dark Elf. And the only reason it's going to be Dark Elf is... Be the only reason is because Dark Elf has 9% uh, max magicka. Compared to like a Breton or a High Elf's 10%. Now, the High Elf has 4% elemental damage. But the Dark Elf has 7% elemental damage. Which ends up boosting your uh, flame damage. From your vicious death set. Now, do I recommend Dark Elf as a top pick for this race? I do not. Even though it hits the hardest, I still don't recommend it as the uh, top pick for this race. Um, the the reason why I recommend High Elf or Breton or Dark Elf is just because this uh, build runs really, really low magical recovery, or, or at least I choose to run really low magical recovery. Um, I choose to run really low magical. Recovery. You can you can switch some of your your spell damage pieces out for recovery, or you can switch the Munda Stone from Shadow to at H knock for more recovery. And you can do that, and the set, the the build will be a little bit more well balanced. But personally, I decided to go with the full on damage, and especially because I am an Imperial, so I'm already missing on like four to five thousand ma max magicka because I'm not a high elf, dark, dark elf, or Breton. Um, so I decided to go with that option. But again. Because of the low recovery, the 3% cost reduction from Breton is very appealing. The 10% recovery from High Elf is also very appealing. High Elf and Breton are probably the top picks. High Elf is going to hit harder than Breton, but Breton's going to be a little bit more survivable and a little bit tanky just because of the spell resistance. It's really up to you which one you decide to go with. Personally, 
For this build in particular, I'm leaning towards High Elf for the extra damage and recovery. Um, and uh, if you're Dark Elf, it, it's, it, it also works wonders. Now, I'm going to get into champion points, but I'm just making sure I haven't forgotten anything. I'm using Infuse on the chest and legs. Everything else is Divines. I'm using the Shadow Mundus, which increases my critical damage. Not my critical chance, but my critical damage. Arcane with spell damage on the jewelry. Vicious Death. Um, now, if you do not have Vicious Death, I ran Julianos instead of Vicious Death, and I had very, very good results. I actually posted a full montage of me using Julianos on my YouTube channel, and I was able to wipe uh, decently sized groups. But obviously, with Vicious Death, you take it one step further. Um, so the stats. Fully buffed. Uh, right now we have about 40.6k maximum magicka, 29k health, which is really, really good considering this is a glass cannon build. It really helps you avoid getting one shot, whatnot. About 11k maximum stamina, 800 magic recovery unbuffed. Our spell damage and recovery buffed, 47.1% spell critical, but let me show you our buffed spell damage. Obviously, here's the thing. I am not using entropy with this build. Sap Essence gives you spell damage. But you don't want to use Sap Essence to get your initial spell damage because it's going to give you away. That's why with this build, I run V15 Detection Potions. Gives you 20 meter detection for 16 seconds. Gets you Major Sorcery and restores Magicka. Now the reason I went with this option is because the detection actually does come into play. A lot of you know the big groups sometimes will be sitting in stealth and you won't be able to see how many players there actually are. Popping the detection will help you... Uh, find them better if they're stealthed up or avoid other gankers that could potentially kill you because you can see them before they see you um, and then obviously after you do your initial stealth detection you can switch to tri stat potions because you can get your spell damage from your sap essence I think I covered everything here let me just show you my buffed spell damage with this setup about 4.2k with Julianos it was closer to 4.5k but I dropped a little bit of spell damage for the Vicious Death um, proc, which is definitely worth it. About 926 magic recovery on the front bar, 973 on the back bar. See, the recovery is really low, but that's kind of what the build focuses on, just damage. If you want to make a, a different version of the build with a little bit more recovery, you might have uh, better results or different results. Let me know what you find with your own personal testing. Let's go into the champion points. Hundred points into magician. Since our recovery is very low, we might as well maximize our cost reduction using uh, the magician. We have about forty-seven into arcanist and twenty into tumbling, just for a little bit more CC break capabilities and um, dodge rolls. Over here, we have eighty points into elemental expert, fifty into elfborn. I don't have any into spell erosion or bless. You could put some in here if you if you insist. And then I also have thirty-seven into thaumaturge. Now, I'm not really running any dots besides my Soul Tether, Leech, and a, maybe a few other things, but Thaumaturge increases your proximity detonation damage. It is considered a damage over time, even though it doesn't act like your standard damage over time. Uh, the champion system considers it a dot. So, 12.5% increase, and that is going to stack with the 21.4% increase from here, and if it crits, another 15%. So, it's really good stacking as far as damage is concerned over here um 41 into resistance just to be a little bit more tanky 63 into hardy 63 into elemental defender uh, again you want to just minimize incoming damage and that's about it guys that's a champion system uh laid out for you guys this is 501 cp as far as food is concerned we are using uh blue v15 food to increase our maximum health and maximum magicka uh, just this is the best option as far as food if you want to hit hard now if you want more recovery You could go with recovery. You could go with max health magic recovery You could go with a lot of different setups Just whatever you're comfortable with really is what you what you're gonna end up going with um, Now a lot of people sometimes ask me like Cypher you never go over the passives in your build what passives are you using guys? Um, we're at a point in the game where You just use all the passives that help you like read the passive if you feel like this is gonna help you use it Obviously you want all the nightblade passives obviously you want you don't have to use all the dual passes. I use Slaughter, Rufian, and Twins, Blade, and Blunt. These don't really help you that much. All the resto passives, all the light armor, all the medium ones, except the five piece, because you're not wearing five pieces of medium, all the heavy, except the five piece. Um, obviously, the Fighters Guild passives, 
Mage's Guild passes, Undaunted passes, all the Assault Alliance War passes, and your Racial passes. Like, and then the big one over here for is Alchemy. You are going to be relying on Potion effectiveness and things like that. So, uh, getting your Alchemy to 50 so that your Potion effects last 30% longer is pretty handy and it's almost necessary for this build. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to upload a montage with this build very soon using Vicious Death. I already uploaded one using Julianos, but with Vicious Death, we've had some crazier, crazier explosions going on. So thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, please comment down below in the comment section. And uh, this build will be posted and updated on my website, CypherPK.com. I'll also be uploading and updating the Stamina Nightblade, Stamina DK, and the Magicka Sorcerer, and even the Stamina Templar as well. Um, that will all happen soon enough. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the support. Have a great day and take care.